I was just talking to somebody earlier when we had a little breakout time and talking about Zelle, like I was integral in the evolution of Zelle as it was implemented in the first couple banks in the US. I appreciate you. Like, Z how many people here be, use Zelle? Like, just by raising hands. Like, just think about that. Like, how cool is it? I was the only one that looked like me in the room. The first credit union who rolled that out in the US market, I was on the consulting team to implement it and turn it on live. So so real quick, so this, this is aside from uh, from his, um, his bio. Uh, so we met about, what was that, 11, 12 years ago? Yeah. At least. Yeah, it was about 12 years ago. At least. And when we met, it was really crazy. I actually, so I didn't have any, uh, so so as a god fair man, at the time, I didn't have any, like, male friends that were, like, men of God, men who, who, who loved Jesus. And literally that morning, I was praying with a, a, couple, a, a few of my homegirls who were, like, my only friends who loved God. And actually, I asked them to pray with me to, like, God would connect me with some other God-fearing men. What about me? <laughs> oh, I said, like, men, like, men, men. <laughs> No, I'm just playing. Uh, shout, shouts out to Eric, uh, the, the video director and videographer of the podcast. Um, so, but literally, I went to the went to the bus stop and um, to to catch the bus to 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 go to work. And at the bus stop, I had my Bible open. I was reading my Bible, and I got on the bus. I was reading my Bible, and there was this this guy at the bus stop on the phone talking pretty loud. I got on the bus. Out of all, like this bus stop was packed. This guy, now the guy who was on the phone, we ended up sitting next to each other on the bus. And I'm reading my Bible, this guy's on the phone, and I noticed that he's actually talking about God to someone on the phone. And after he got off the phone, the guy and I started chopping it up, and he, uh, he invited me that evening to a gathering with some of his homeboys who are all at different churches. And he was like, yo, we just get together, we're just homeboys, we get together, and we just kind of like, you know, open up the Bible, we kind of talk, chop it up. And that same night, uh, I met Cortez, and so really cool how we met, but also just want to like just point out like, yo, prayer does work. Prayer is powerful. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, that that literally that night from that morning, I prayed something, and that night I had like like eight different different homeboys that were like men of faith and stuff. So I thought it was uh, pretty cool. Amen. And uh, yeah, just to fast forward around that time, I think around that time is when you had just gotten in tech, right? That is exact time I was transitioning into tech. That's so crazy. So y'all see like how long ago, or just basically like how long he's been in tech. Yeah. If, if y'all can kind of like, you know, if your math is better than mine, you basically can, uh, can, can uh, uh, figure that out. Um, so yeah, so let's go, let's go ahead and get into it. I don't want to continue boring y'all with, you know, our, our personal, you know, uh, story and background. So, uh, bro, so real quick, first we're going to do some, uh, a reaction. Okay. Quick reaction. Y'all are allowed to be involved with this as well. So, Recently, San Francisco just said that they're going to allow the police to deploy robots that will have the ability to kill people, yep. essentially. Specifically, people that are doing like very lethal crimes, like if someone's like has a bunch of hostages, or like they're saying it's supposed to be for very dire situations right. where they're like, okay, there's a bomber in the building who has people. Right. If we send in our SWAT team, they could all die. They have wives, they have families. So instead, right. let's send in our robot that is trained, AI parenting, AI program is programmed right. to go ahead and take out this threat. Correct. So quick reaction to that. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, when you think about... And, and nobody, if he says something, I'm going to say this to the cameras. If he says something, if anybody sees this, don't take a clip and try to cancel him. We ain't canceling nobody <laughs> out here. We just, we just talking. Oh, good. Everybody trying good. to cancel people nowadays. Yeah, we ain't good. doing none of that. No, we're good. Yeah. We're all good. Almost with my Balenciaga today. So. Yeah, <laughs> we good. talked about I that. Didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> no, but, but when, you think, when you think about the role of technology... I think that is a natural evolution of where technology and where AI is going to go at some point. Yeah. I think, just think about it. We see it in the movies, right? You see iRobot. You see movies like that, right? Will Smith and things like that that have occurred maybe 10 years ago, 15 years ago. You're now starting to see some of that technology actually play out. 
there was a Tom Cruise movie, right, where Tom Cruise had the same thing, Minority Report, yeah. right, where you're kind of predicting things that are going to occur in the future. That is literally what machine learning was built to do, but we're leveraging it in different areas, right? You might have leveraged AI and machine learning in banking. You might have leveraged machine learning to help you make smarter decisions in your specific field of choice, right? But now we're leveraging AI and equipping robots to act as officers. Some of it will be automated. Some of it will be AI, true AI. Mm -hmm. And other aspects of it, I think, will ultimately be driven by a person behind the scenes, right? Yeah. But now I'm sending a robot into harm's way versus an actual human, you can have loss of life. But if we think about it, I think it is a natural progression of technology, of AI to be used in other areas versus just these academic and business areas. It's gonna happen. Just, just hold on. Hopefully the people behind it are making smart decisions. We've talked about that before yeah. on, on another platform about you know, how you do it the smart way and how you implement it the smart way. And I think the quality assurance testing that's gonna go into that is gonna be, obviously the litmus test is if it's gonna be implemented correctly, but if done right, I think and hopefully can help scale that police force, which yeah. really the, the issue is they're undermanned, they're understaffed. Yeah, they are, they really are. And they're leveraging technology to hopefully expand and provide better service to the community. Yeah. Hold on really quickly, we have to interrupt to give a major shout out to our event sponsor, Careers. Careers is the one that actually made our podcast In the Sky happen, them being our main sponsor. But aside from just being a sponsor for Podcast in the Sky, Careers is actually a tech bootcamp that I did to break into tech. Yes, I did their sales engineering program. I have friends who did their manual QA program, their tech sales program. All of us have broken into tech between about one month to five months. Most get a job within that range. So definitely check out Careers. Uh, we do have information for a discount that'll be linked somewhere. Uh, we'll ha also have it in the description. But apart from that, we want to thank Careers for being both a great tech boot camp as well as the sponsor for our podcast in the sky. Wonderful. Wasn't that such a dope answer? Yeah. It, man, this man is like, it's like he prepared for these. And he really, that, that was literally a curveball. He did not know I was going to ask him that. Man, so dope. I ho hope to be as prolific a, a speaker as you at some point. Um, now, and I want to touch on this because when we spoke before, one of the things we did talk about was kind of the importance of, of diversity, of people being in this space. Because like, like you said, this is going to happen no matter what. Everybody's like, oh, this shouldn't happen. These things are going to happen. It's already the direction we're going in. So instead of, being, instead of us saying, okay, this shouldn't happen, instead, and, and I'm literally just kind of paraphrasing what you said when we talked before, instead, this should cause us to consider why we should have more diversity of, of thought, more diversity of culture, just different people of different backgrounds to be a part of this industry right. so that way we can essentially help look out for our communities and look out for just the, the ideals of what's happening with this new technology. I mean, not only to be a part of it, but also don't you want to benefit from it too, right? I, you know, I'm capitalist, right? <laughs> I'm, all about, I'm all about business. I'm all about making moves. Yeah. Yes, you want to be involved in the evolution of a particular industry, particular field. I think we should play a bigger role in what happens. Yeah. A lot of times we're not at the tables when those type of technologies are coming together. I was just talking to somebody earlier when we had a little breakout time and talking about Zelle, like I was integral in the evolution of Zelle as it was implemented in the first couple banks in the US. I appreciate you. Like, Z how many people here be, use Zelle? Like, just by raise of hands. Like, just think about that. Like, how cool is it? I was the only one that looked like me in the room when they were talking about how we gonna implement Zelle in the first bank. How are we gonna turn on the ability to take a picture of a check, remote deposit capture, nobody cares about the technical name, but RDC, <laughs> the ability to take a picture of a check and deposit into your bank account, the first credit union who rolled that out in the US market, I was on the consulting team to implement it and turn it on live, right? So like when you think about some of those things like, yes, you wanna be a part of the technology as it's occurring, you wanna have a seat at the table or at least just know it's coming. Yes. And now you kind of just feel involved, you can drop in your two cents, those are all cool things. But when you think about now benefiting from it, how can I position myself, not only to be a worker bee, to be a part of it, but how do I benefit from it? Yeah. And I think not too many times and not often enough is it someone that looks like us on the other side of the table that's benefiting from it. Yeah. What I mean by that, are you a subcontractor? Is okay. there a minority-based business that is benefiting from that technology evolution? 
right? When they rolled out cardless cash, I don't know if anybody know what cardless cash is. That's the ability to tap and go at an ATM where you don't have to touch the ATM. I use that all the time. You don't have to do it. You just kind of like pre-stage it. Boom, you're just done. NFC, you're rocking and rolling. Well, when Debold rolled it out, I don't know if anybody knows Debold, but they're in the financial technology space, global company, competitor of NCR. So when Debold rolled it out, there was a contractor who we partnered with at the time, who was a minority-based business based in Ohio, who turned on all the NFC devices that were you know, in that geographic area. Not globally, but for that geographic area, we partnered with them to be able to do that. That was just so cool to me. I had never seen that before. Right, it was cool that I was there, but now it was also really cool to see someone that looked like me that was directly benefiting from technology evolution. And so you said something a, a minute ago where you had talked about us benefiting from this. Right. And I like the direction that you went in because that wasn't even what I was expecting. So that was like really educational for me. But even as, aside from that, there's another way we could benefit from it as well, yeah. where, which is, and I guess I, I would want to know if you agree with this or not, which is also investing, like actually taking our coins. Because yeah. again, this is that, the direction things are heading into, whether or not we agree with it or, or not, or whether or not we, we have a certain way that we feel about it. Right. But I guess, what are your thoughts about us actually? So you being a person who's in tech, you've been in this industry, again, what, what about a decade now, 11 years? Yep. You've scaled, you've done a lot of cool things. He's, he's been a senior sales engineer. So right. anybody who talks to me, I know diddly squat about being a sales engineer in comparison to his knowledge of being a sales engineer. Uh, also, um, you're, you're a developer as well, right? Like you've been yep. a, a senior. I, I dibbled and dabbled a little bit of development. He dibbled, he dibbled yeah. and dabbled in everything in tech, basically. So he, he dibbled <laughs> and dabbled in, in it all. Yeah. Uh, and so, but with that, you scale to a place where not putting all your business out there, but where, yo, you're making amazing income in this industry. Yeah. And just curious, like, have you, like, what are your thoughts? Maybe not you personally, but what are your thoughts about people investing some of their money from being in tech yeah. into some of these startups and enter some yeah. of these initiatives with this technology? Oh, absolutely. I think if you're not positioning yourself to take advantage of the industry trends, take advantage of the progressions that we're seeing in tech, man, you're crazy. Even if you're a simple investor and you're investing in the companies on the public trades, right? You're just investing in the stock, right? Just minimum, at least if you're doing that, right? For example, my son, he's 12 years old. He came to me last week and was like, dad, did you see all the movies that Disney is releasing next week? Uh, I'm sorry, they're, they're releasing next week on, on the platform, online, on you know, what is it, Disney, Disney Plus? Plus? yeah, yeah. And then also next year, do you see all the movies are coming out with next year? And I was like, no, but okay, that sounds cool. Like, what are they about? He was like, but, Dad, I was thinking, should we be investing in Disney stock? Ooh, yo, He's son. 12. <laughs> Come on, you better stand it up for that. That's so, crazy. So, yo, do you understand how proud I was? Like, I was literally like, Ooh. yes, we are. <laughs> I literally pulled up my Robin Hood app right there in the moment. I was like, I'm going to get you not only, Daddy's going to buy some, but I'm gonna set you up a new account. He only 12, so I couldn't really set him up a full account, but I just did another account under my name and just bought him his own share, Let's his go. one. And I was like, I'm gonna just, just so you can feel it. Yes. Just so as that stock goes up, even if it's 1%, 2%, I wanted him to have ownership to be able to log in on his phone to be able to watch it. Yeah. Just so he can see it. So that's the only stock he has. He ain't really have a big portfolio, but the fact that even though I didn't really teach him, I wish I could say like I was just being a great dad and I taught him all these great things. He just absorbed it. I think just by maybe overhearing conversations or what have you. So going back to your question, I think absolutely you should be investing in the tech industry. Yeah. The things that I do, obviously in the stock area, no doubt. REITs also, no doubt, right? So investing in real estate, big portfolios of real estate is something that we do. And then obviously outside of that, we take our money and we invest in platforms and services like Airbnb, which a lot of people don't think of them as a tech firm, but when you think about They're it- They're definitely a tech firm. Definitely a tech They're firm. Definitely tech. They got more tech, tech employees and, and tech income that they pay out on a salary basis than any other job, yeah. right? So when you think about it, you know, I've invested in leveraging that platform, Toro, another platform, yeah. Uber, right? These platforms are platforms that we've all used and not only uh, bought their stock in some cases, but also leveraged their platform as side hustles to continue to make money. And I think because of my background in tech, I understand their platforms and it comes natural to me yes. to be able to leverage them. So that that's super dope. I guess I didn't even think about it like that because so you do own, is it is it seven properties now? 
Oh no, we are way more than seven. We're in seven. We're in six cities. Oh, you, oh, so I mistook it. I yes. thought you, you had six properties and I'm got a here. seven property. So you're in. So you own properties in six cities. That's right. And That's one right. is right. not to put all your all your business yeah, out there. Put it one's out there. outside of the country, right? That's right. Man, y'all clap it up for that. Yeah, yeah. Y'all yeah. clap it yeah, up yeah. for that. Bro, that's yeah. incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Man. All right. So for everyone who's listening to this right now, and you're thinking in your minds, man. I would love to have my own Airbnb business. Just the beauty of having that style of business, the passive income that comes along with it. But the issue that most people run into is that you also start to think, well, I don't own any properties or I might own one property, but I live there or I don't know how to start an Airbnb business. Even if I started an Airbnb business, I'd have to worry about things like finding a location, the cleaning services, how to furnish the property, how to list the property. Well, our guest Cortez actually has his own turnkey Airbnb business where literally he will set up your Airbnb. He'll be able to find the location for you, furnish the property, list it on Airbnb, handle the cleaning services, basically everything that you don't wanna do except for the part where you make money. We encourage you to check out Cortez is Airbnb service, not just something we're encouraging to do, but something I actually have invested in myself. So literally drinking the very Kool-Aid, we're encouraging you to check out. So make sure that you use our discount code tech. So that way you'd be able to save $250 off of this Airbnb service. Details and discounts will be down in the description below. Man, so dope. I, I say this uh, all the time because there are always people that come up to me and they're like, man, Cyrus, you're dope. You're doing dope things. And I'm like, man, I'm so inspired by people that are like years ahead of me that are doing things to where I'm able to like step back and see some of the moves you're making and some of the moves others are making. Yeah. Uh, we have Sherman uh, here in the building who's, who's a, a good friend of mine and I'm gonna be interviewing him uh, shortly. And it's like, I'm able to kind of like step back and kind of watch y'all trailblaze and it really kind of giving me ideas as to some things to do. And I love how you touched on how you working in tech has helped you understand Airbnb and similar uh, tech companies in a way that you've been able to leverage that for your own Airbnb properties. Like how, but but you still work in tech, correct? Oh, no doubt. Like I still work in tech every single day, love what I do and have no plans of leaving the tech space. Okay, so you're clearly like very successful with, with Airbnb in six different cities, properties outside of outside of the, uh, the nation. How do you juggle not just working in tech, like you're like senior level in tech. Right. Like how do you juggle that and having a thriving Airbnb business? Also, yeah. you coach people in like Airbnb, things like that. Right. How do you juggle that and how can people like do something similar? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, the biggest thing for me, uh, shout out to my wife. She was here earlier. She had to step out. She had a dinner, but I think she's going to be coming back. I mean, she's been like definitely my backbone throughout the whole process. Absolutely. So my wife is a licensed realtor, right? So when I think about like some of the things that we've been able to do, I wouldn't have been able to do it as easily, as quickly Man. if I didn't have her skill set. Bro, that's such a perfect pairing. Talk to me. Oh my gosh. Me. Now, 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 this is sidebar. We ain't even prep for this, but... <laughs> My wife wasn't a realtor when I started. Okay. I had to coach her up on baby. Oh, so you put her on kids like. <laughs> if you became a realtor, <laughs> we could keep all the money, right? Instead of y'all having to go to a realtor. You understand what I'm saying? Oh my gosh. Y'all so, just playing 3D chess? Y'all see this? <laughs> they like, we gonna cut out all the middlemen. Cutting them chess. out. We cut, and we started a cleaning company. Oh my gosh. So we started a cleaning company so we don't have to outsource the cleaning anymore. We start property management companies in every That's city. <laughs> I'm just saying, bro. I'm just saying. Man. Yeah, I'm just saying. But, you know, it took a lot of planning, a lot of staying up late at night, yeah. sitting in the basement when, when you met me. When you met me 12 years ago, whatever that was. Like, those are the days that I was sitting back in my garage at the time. I, I had just moved from Vinings. I just got a house in Fairburn. I was renting this house in Fairburn. And we used to sit in the garage. And we used to sit down and strategize, like, man, how am I going to make this move into tech? And, and for me, I was always thinking about leverage. I was always thinking about once I get into tech, it's going to give me more free time. Because I was making good money before I got into tech. I don't know if you knew that. No, I didn't know that. I was, like, making, like, 90000 back then. Just a little 90000 Like, Just a little 90000 But I had kids. You know, I had a house. <laughs> That's a little 90000 I wasn't single. <laughs> I mean, I'm not shooting on it, but I oh, had oh, a... Oh, yeah, you had family. I had a okay. family, yeah, like... Okay. So like when you got yeah. multiple kids, like, yo, that 90,000 don't stretch as far as you think. 
So I was struggling. Yeah. I was making 90,000 y'all, but I was struggling. I was literally living paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. Right? I had a car note, di diapers, formula. Like, it was, it was hard. Like, it wasn't easy, you know? Yeah, yeah so, I was, when I first got no into joke. tech, my first company, Dialpad, they hit, uh, started me at 90,000. And even though, you know, no children, no wife, none of that, yeah. I realized, it was significantly more money than I had ever made. Right. I realized after a few months, I was like, you know what? This actually isn't that much Bro, money. it's not. It's you know, not. and so so it makes sense with all of the other components it's that perspective, that you had. and you got components. I had student loans. I went to these private schools, right? I went to expensive universities, right? That education costs money. You got to pay back them loans. Hopefully, we ain't paying back all of them. We'll see what happens politically. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, that's a plug. That's a plug. Go vote, y'all. Go vote. Okay. <laughs> all right. But back to the question. Back to the question. Um, but no. But I I, I think it's just. The ability to have a partner, I think, has helped me strategize, have those late night, you know, heart to heart conversations of how can we do this together has been able to really help me, I think, grow and elevate. And then also, I really leverage VAs. So if you guys don't know what a VA is, a virtual assistant, I have multiple VAs. I have a VA that just answers a lot of my emails. I have another VA that can respond to Airbnb guests when they're booking or they have questions. I have a standard list of things that they might ask, things that they could ask. If they don't have this answer, here's another sheet that has kind of those third level, tier one, tier two, tier three. So the VA is already equipped to be able to answer those things that I would typically do. Um, if it's happened before, I've documented it, and the VA can now respond for me. So when I'm at work, at my tech job, and I get an email on my phone or a push notification from the Airbnb app about something that's occurring, the VA is already on it before. Most times, I even have a chance to get to the notification. So I leverage VAs, and they're really cost effective, especially if you have offshore VAs. You can really train them up over time, and they can do really quality work for you for a fraction of the cost. So that's kind of how I multiply myself is by leveraging the VAs. And then obviously for bigger ticket items, then I can lean on my wife who's got that now, that real estate experience and can help me out in that area.